the case against Della was building. Hamilton County, Ohio's chief assistant prosecutor, Tom Longano, was brought in. To our case, the forensic evidence was most important, coupled with the facts that she had made statements to people that she would do him bodily harm. And Daryl, in fact, had confided in friends and relatives that he was in fear for his life, that Della had threatened to kill him. It seemed that Della had made good on her threats. But first, she cast her spell on Sutorius. Investigators learned that the lonely doctor had met his bride-to-be through a dating service and had rushed to the altar only three months later, seduced by her lies. The honeymoon hadn't lasted long. Della Sutorius' stylish cover story soon opened onto page after page of dime novel violence and deception. And she was posing as somebody named Dante, and he didn't care. And she was posing as somebody who went to UCLA and graduated from college, and he never checked on it. And she was posing as somebody who had all this fantastic knowledge of the arts, etc. He never knew anything about that. He knew she looked good in a bathing suit. She claimed that she loved him, and that's all he cared about. She had no college education, as she purported. And until she set her sights on the doctor, she was in constant need of money. She'd been married four times before, not twice, as she said during their brief courtship. She had been Della Hoffer, Della Beyer, Della Bassett, and Della Britton. Each of her relationships had ended in angry divorces. Her marriage to Sutorius seemed to be following the same course. Della and the doctor's fights over money became increasingly bitter. Their rancor reached new heights when the surgeon's daughter announced her wedding plans. Della refused to allow Sutorius to pay for his daughter's wedding. Della had a fanatical need to fuel her spendthrift ways. Without a prenuptial agreement, she would gain little from a divorce. They were not married very long and under Ohio law, she was not really entitled to much by way of financial settlement. On the other hand, if he had died of a suicide or natural causes, she stood to inherit a, about a million dollars. It was to Della's benefit to prevent the divorce. Did that mean murder? Perhaps. But investigators needed hard evidence to make the case. The peek into her past revealed her capacity for violence. She had set one boyfriend on fire while he slept. She threatened another with a gun. This cycle of violence escalated throughout her life. So it went from being just throwing things around with husband number one, throwing dishes and that kind of thing, to then all of a sudden, um, you know, destroying property of the car and this and that with husband number two, to then destroying homes, to then, then pulling knives. And with the last husband, she took a gun and pulled the trigger at his head. It was empty. The bullets were not in the gun, but she didn't know that. She didn't know that. She was ready to kill David Britton. He testified to that in court. She was going to blow his head off. In the case of Daryl Sutorius, it appeared that Della may have succeeded in her murderous plans. Yes, I'm looking for a gun for self-defense. Okay. Investigators traced the serial number on the gun that killed the doctor. It's a 38 revolver. It was registered to Della Sutorius, purchased shortly before the murder. Further checks revealed that this was not the first pistol she'd owned. An officer on the case recalled that several months before the shooting, a man had approached him to turn in a 22 caliber handgun. He said it belonged to his wife, and that she had threatened him with it. That man was Daryl Sutorius. The officer told him to hand over the weapon at the police station and to file charges of domestic violence. The gun was turned in, but he didn't file charges. So he thought he got the gun out of the house and he was safe. Little did he know, she went out and bought herself another gun. The owner of the gun shop where Della bought her second pistol remembered that she was a tough customer. He told police that even though a shooting lesson was included in the price of the weapon, Della didn't need it. 
she was a natural dead-eye. And with the loaded pistol in her hand, she would told him she wouldn't let her husband get away with divorce. But hearsay about threats still wasn't enough to bring charges. Investigators had to place her in the room with the smoking gun. The death of Dr. Daryl Sutorius looked like murder. Investigators had learned that his wife, Della, had both motive and opportunity to kill him. But could they raise tangible evidence to prove it? Coroner Carl Parrott thought he could. He noted that a thin sheen of blood covered practically all of the gun's surfaces. Occasionally you'll see blood on a weapon after a suicide. But the distribution is where you'd expect it to be. On the muzzle, front sight, maybe the front of the trigger guard. The places you would not expect to see it are on the grips, which are shielded by the shooter's hand. Parrott found a partial bloody palm print left on the grip of the weapon. He determined that the print had been transferred to the grip by a blood-stained hand when the blood was almost dry. Given the lethal nature of his wound, Dr. Sutorius could not have shot himself, dropped the gun, and then picked it up again. Finally, here was proof positive that a second person had been at the scene. The print was too smeared to compare it with Della's, but Della Sutorius had no alibi for the weekend her husband lay dead in the basement. When all the evidence was assembled, the events of the doctor's last day alive became clear. The style to which Della Sutorius had grown accustomed was slipping through her fingers. Pressure was mounting. Divorce was imminent. On Saturday, February 17th, she reached the end of her rope and the end of the eight-day waiting period to pick up her new gun. After shooting her sleeping husband, she arranged his body to make it appear that he had killed himself. Then she placed the gun in the lifeless hand and pulled the trigger once more, making the bullet hole in the floor. Now, gunshot residue would be found on the doctor's hand by any forensic expert who looked for it. On February 27, 1996, the widow was arrested for the murder of her husband. In her book, Della's Web, Aphrodite Jones described the final moments of the trial four months later. The sordid saga of Della Dante Fay Hall Hofer Beyer Bassett Britton Sutorius ended on June 7, 1996. A tear rolled down her face as she listened to closing arguments. Then Della collapsed in her chair as the jury announced the verdict, guilty of aggravated murder in the death of her husband. The widow Sutorius was sentenced to life in prison. She will be 70 years old before she's eligible for parole.